Welcome back to the CPU Galaxy channel. Well, after almost one month of an unplanned break on my channel, we are back here with some interesting stuff. I planned a lot of cool videos for the rest of this year, so thanks to my loyal viewers to keep tuned on my channel. For today, we have some weird upgrade CPUs for 286 platforms we will have a closer look on. I got those parts donated from a viewer here, thanks to Kalle from Germany for sending over that. The first part is this 286-2386 upgrade uh, thing. I have no idea who was manufacturing this, nor from where it was coming from. The PCB looks also not so nice with those remaining edges from the PCB manufacturing process. Here we have an Intel 386SX16 CPU. The 386SX had a 16-bit data bus instead of 32-bit uh, as the DX has. Therefore, I think it's usable as an upgrade for a 286 platform, which has just a 16-bit data bus. Beside that, we have some logic devices, the 74373. These are bus drivers. And next to this, an Intel PLD or programmable logic device. On the bottom side, we can see here these gold contacts, which should sit into a PLCC socket. These PLCC sockets uh, were mostly used on 286 boards back in the days. Also here in between, some bus drivers. It's definitely an interesting piece and I'm looking forward to test this later on. Uh, we have no separate clock here on this uh, small PCB. That means we have to deal with the given clock of the 286 board. If it's just a 12 MHz board, uh, the 386 is underclocked in such a case. So let's see if a 386 SX gives us any performance increments compared to a 286 CPU in the same board. Next part we have here is this 286 to 286 adapter piece thing. Again with this gold contact on the bottom which should fit into a PLCC socket. On the top side we have here again a PLCC socket for a 286 CPU. But in the middle we can see here a strange chip which has no marking on it. And the interesting part is then on the bottom side. Here we have three small chips which are made by Cypress. C the CY7C169A. And after checking the datasheet it turned out that those chips are 2 kilobyte static RAMs. That means we got here 6 kilobytes of cache memory which gets uh, somehow controlled uh, by this mysterious chip underneath the CPU here. If that would work out, it could be quite cool and should bring a decent performance improvement. This upgrade thing came also with this PGA to PLCC adapter, because the chip inside the PLCC socket would block the CPU to sit completely into the socket. So therefore they did this kind of sandwich thing to provide the chip here the right space. What a stack of adapters for this 286. <laughs> I'm really curious if this is going to work and uh, if we can uh, see this uh, cache chips working in this socket. If you know more about the manufacturer or the purpose of this thing, please write it uh, to the comments. Any information is highly appreciated. Then let's have a closer look at the hardware we will use for this test. The main board is a standard 8D sized 286 board with a VLSI chipset dated in 1990. 1 MB of RAM and a clock of 12 MHz. As a reference, uh, we will use this AMD 286 CPU. The video card I will go for is this Morse VGA card with the Trident 8800 chip and 512 kilobytes of video memory. This card fits perfectly in the era of 286 systems. Then let's first boot up our AMD 286. It is posting nicely. The BIOS of this mainboard is just very basic stuff and nothing special to set here. But there is one nice feature in that BIOS version. It contains some diagnostic software which allows to check the setup nicely as different video tests, keyboard and drives. This can be also very useful for low-level formatting MFM drives. 
The board boots without any issues and the BIOS is reporting at 286 as expected. Let's first start with Norton Sysinfo. This program is also showing a 286 at 12 MHz. The benchmark shows off here with a value of 9, which is our reference now. Next, let's start Landmark. Here we get a 286 equivalent of 18 MHz, which is a quite good value for a 12 MHz setup. In Checkit we can check the integer and floating point speed. The AMD 286 shows here 2833 dry stones and 56.8 kilo wet stones. 3D Bench is of course a slideshow and gives us here a value of 8.3 frames. Now we have our reference measured and we can start with the first upgrade part, the sandwich thing with the included cache. Yeah, normally you need a special tool to, re to remove the PLCC chip from the socket. Unfortunately, I don't have one available here. I will try to remove the CPU with a small tool like that. But be careful, with something like that you can easily damage your socket. So I can recommend to buy a PLCC removing tool for these uh, purposes. So then let's put uh, this thing inside. Please take care always about pin number one. You can see this here on the CPU uh, with this flat edge here and also here on the socket there is one side which is a little bit flattened. I'm very curious if this thing is anyhow working. So let's switch it on and yes we get a post screen. So the board is booting just normal, yeah, and Norton Sys Info shows here as well at 286 at 12 MHz as we had before. But if the cache is working, I would expect a better benchmark result. But damn, it gives us here also a result of 9. Also at Landmark we get here the same values as before. Same in Checkit and 3D Bench as well. So obviously the cache is not working at all. And also the cache check tool cannot get started, cause it requires a 386 CPU. Well, so, unfortunately the cache is not working at all. For sure there were special drivers or some software needed for that to activate it. Without that, well, it's doing the same job as the AMD Plastic 286. It just looks so much cooler, but that's it. If you have any hints for me uh, how to activate the cache or which software might be uh, working there, please write a comment below, it's highly appreciated. And then let's move on to the next upgrade, our 386. There I have of course some hope to improve the performance here on the board. Always take care about the pin number 1, on the 386 this dot is indicating that and it should align on the socket with this flat corner. A 386 in a 286 board, let's see if we get a post screen. And yes, we have a post screen, very nice. The BIOS is reporting here now a 386 and I'm very very curious about the tests now. Norton Sys Info reports here as 386 as well, clocked at 12 MHz. As I mentioned before, we don't have a separate clock here on this 386 uh, PCB upgrade. We need to deal with the board frequency and this is now 12 MHz, although the CPU could uh, go up to 16 MHz. And now the benchmark. Wah, 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 wah. The 386 performs here lower and gives us a value of 8.6, which is 0.4 less compared to the 286 before. So <laughs> this looks not so promising so far. Then let's see what we can get in Landmark. Also here it is showing a 386 but only a 286 equivalent of 17 MHz, so 1 MHz less than compared to the 286 before. In Checkit we get the same value for integer calculations, but only 52.5 kilo whetstones, which is 4.3 kilo whetstones less than on the 286 before. So it seems that the 386 SX can handle on the same frequency uh, floating point operations, uh, not that good as the 286. 
also 3D pen shows up on the 3 d 6 with almost one frame less. So this is uh, now really disappointing to me and yeah, the only benefit so far, we can execute software which requires a 3 d 6 as the cache check tool, which is absolutely pointless in a setup where we don't have any cache right now. So what is the outcome now? Well, in terms of performance, absolutely nothing. But we got some interesting parts to test here. A 386 upgrade, which makes absolutely no sense, cause the 286 is definitely performing much better here. The only benefit on the 386 is that you could get the true 386 protected mode and you can execute stuff which requires a 386. But in terms of performance, wah wah wah, you would not get anything on top. Probably we could install Windows 95 here if we could manage to get 4 MB of RAM into this board, but that is also pointless at the end. The definitely most interesting part is the 286 adapter thing here with the cache chips on it. If that cache would work, we could see for sure some performance improvements and that could really kick the 286 board to another level. But as I mentioned already, I don't know the manufacturer of this thing and again, if you have any clue how to activate the cache or which DOS drivers might work here, please let me know below in the comments. Yeah, for me, this was very interesting, although we did not gain any performance, we got just knowledge and I'm fine with that as well. So for now, I just stick to software which is supposed to run on this old board as some old nice games. I hope you liked the video and give me some thumbs up if yes. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.